I'm Julia Kitchell and welcome back to my series on learning how to sew. We are working out of a book called School of Sewing by Shay Henderson and the very first project is going to be a pillowcase. So I wanted to kind of show you what it's going to look like when we finish. Um, it has a main fabric, I have a flange, and I have a border. The seams on the inside are going to be very nicely finished off and look very professional. So what I want you to do first of all is think about the fabrics that you're going to use. And I've chosen all f cotton fabrics, and they're very easy to work with. But also, you want to work. Um, you want to think about how the finished product is going to be laundered. It's going to be washed several times. So I would highly recommend that you pre-wash all your fabric. So once you get it all pre-washed, we're ready to press. So let's get going. So after you get your fabric out of the laundry, I want you to notice that you're going to have some frayed ends. You're going to have some. Um, strings that might be tied together or, or got together in the wash, so you're going to want to trim that up a little bit. I do want you to notice as you're lining your fabric up and getting it ready to press, don't worry so much about the end pieces because it may not have been cut straight, but I want you to kind of match up your two salvage ends, and those are the, the pieces that came uh, on the sides when you fold it back together. And make sure you don't have any um, big waffles or bubbles um, at that uh, fold line. So let's go ahead and press again. Use good steam when you're working with cotton. We're going to press and get all the wrinkles out. doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to get it's easier to uh, cut once we get it pressed. So go ahead, press all your fabric, um, all three of your fabrics, and then we'll get ready to cut. So I've got all my fabric pressed and ready to go. I want to talk about cutting. I am going to use a rotary cutter. Um, I have several of these mats in different sizes. I have actually one that's big enough to fit on my uh, floor. Uh, but you can get something like this. You need a hard surface to be able to cut with the rotary cutter. I need 27 inches for the first piece. So what I'm going to do is, since this measuring tool doesn't uh, go to 27 inches, I'm going to go ahead and mark it using my tape measure and take a pair of scissors and just kind of do a little clip here at 27 inches and that way I know where I'm going to be. And then the next thing I'm going to do is line it up on this board. You'll notice that I don't need a ton of space and I find my little clip. I am going to line that clip mark up right here. And I'm going to line this edge up so it's parallel. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line it up. Notice I have enough room to be able to see it on both ends. Next, I'm going to take my rotary cutter and it's on safe right now. I'm going to push the blade out. With one hand, I'm going to firmly hold my rotary cutter down or my ruler down. I'm going to line up and you shouldn't saw with this. You need to cut a straight line and keep going. Just nice pressure. And now I have a nice smooth edge. This is going to be excess fabric. And I have this piece is 27 inches. Now width it wants 41 inches. So you need to measure this to see what your folded over. Remember, you're going to have to do a little math here. So folded over, it's going to be about 44, 45 inches. So this is 21. Um, so double 21 is uh, 42. You don't want to include any of this, what I call the salvage edge, which is, um, it's not going to sew nicely, and it's not going to uh, press nicely, and it's not going to wash nicely. But uh, you want, again, we're going to use that same method of measuring, and I want to be able to cut using a small mat. So if 41 is my measurement that I'm looking for, half of 41 is 20 and a half. So again, I'm going to measure 20 and a half. So 
make sure all of my edges are lined up nicely. I'm, I don't even have to, yeah, I do. I have to mark that. 20 and a half. So after I've clipped a mark, or you can use one of your um, markers or your chalk, I'm going to line this up and make sure it's parallel to those lines and perpendicular to the bottom line. Hold my ruler steady, and then I'm going to simply press and go through all of my layers. If you find that you get these little pieces that want to stick, it probably means that I'm trying to cut through too many layers or it's time to change the blade on my rotary cutter. I do want to mention this a little bit. Um, on the salvage, you're going to have a lot of information who the maker of the fabric is, um, also um, the design color and name, and then all the colors. So if you wanted to match this fabric up to something else later, you could just take this in um, shopping with you and you don't have to take the whole big piece of fabric and you can match your colors. So that's what that's for. So now this piece should be 41 wide by 27 long. And that piece is done. So now that I've got everything cut out, Everything's 40 inches, 41 inches long. Um, my flange is this extra little decorative piece that's going to go on the pillowcase next to the trim. Um, it tells me in the directions to press it with the wrong sides together. So I want to kind of talk about wrong side and right side. My flange is the same on both sides. Um, there doesn't seem to be a wrong side and a right side, but you'll notice with my printed fabric, there's definitely a wrong side and a right side. So wrong sides together would mean you take the, the back side and press it together. So I'm going to take my flange and I'm going to match up the two raw edges and just take my hot steam iron and match these edges up and press. So I want to show you how to pin the flange to the main um, fabric. You'll notice that when I press this fabric that it has a little crease line that shows my center what I'm going to do um, or what I've done is I just folded this in half and marked my center with a pen and that allows me to easily find my center. I'm going to take the right side, remember I talked about right side, wrong side, right side of the main fabric to the right side of the flange and I'm going to match up my center pieces or my center sections and pin. Now, remember pins are like your hands. They're extra things that are going to help you um, hold onto the fabric when you go to the sewing machine. So there is no right or wrong number of pins to put in, but I would start at my center and then at my edges. Looks like I might have got that off just here when I pulled it out and was talking. So I've got my edges, I'm matching them up, making sure everything lays flat, and all the edges, my raw edges, are together. Now that I've got a section pinned, I would probably go back in and find the center point again and pin, and find the next center point in and pin, and as many pins as you feel that you need. If you needed more pins, if you felt less comfortable with uh, just a couple of pins, then I would put more pins in. The direction of the pins um, is going to help you when you get to the sewing machine. So my raw edge is along this edge, and that's the part that's going to be closest to the inside of my sewing machine. I'm going to pin with the pins facing out it'll be easier for me to remove the pins as I'm sewing. Okay, so let's go to the sewing machine. So this next step, what we're going to do is a quarter inch seam allowance. So on my machine, I actually have an option that has a quarter inch seam allowance, but yours may not. Um, there are some markings down here on your um, plate. 
Also, remember I told you that I use the seam gauge. So what I would recommend is the very first time you're doing this, kind of measure where your quarter inch is, and I'm measuring from the needle out. I know that this foot, what I've chosen on my machine, is equal to a quarter of an inch. So once I know, I am going to then make sure that I keep the edge of my foot along the edge of the fabric. When you first start out, I would recommend that you hold your um, top thread and your bobbin thread in your hand until you've done a number of stitches, one or two, and then that way it won't pull back up and unthread. I see that I need to make my stitch length a little bit longer, so I'm going to do that now. Always reverse at least one or two and then come forward. As I'm moving forward, I just want to kind of check. And remember, it's just like driving. You don't want to go any faster than you're comfortable with. So move your fabric as you go. Allow the fabric to be pulled by the machine. Don't force it. Don't pull it. And as fast as you feel that you're comfortable in sewing, that's how fast you're going to move. When you get to a pin, take the pin out. It's not good to drive over those. It's not good for your machine. Again, I'm watching the edge of my fabric and the pressure foot. I stop every once in a while, readjust my fabric. I do have a feature that I can have a needle down, so every time I stop, that needle stops down. If you have that, that's kind of handy because, again, it's helping to hold your fabric in place. Another thing you may notice is my foot comes up without me having to use a bar. This machine does not have a bar on the back to raise the foot. It actually is done with the tap of my presser foot. When you get towards the end, you want to slow down a little bit. And when you get to the very end, before you finish, you want to remember to reverse two or three stitches and then come forward. And then I'm going to remove the thread. I have a little thread cutter on the back. And our first seam is done. Okay, so we've got our main fabric and our flange sewn together. I have my cuff and this should be right side up. Again, my fabric looks the same on the front and the back, so there's no difference. We're going to put the right side up, the wrong side up. So I have right sides facing together and we're going to pin this edge. So again, I'm going to um, find my center. I'm going to find my end and match those up. And continue pinning and meet me back here when we're done. So I have my um, edge pinned to my main fabric and this is where we do a really cool little technique. So I'm going to take this extra fabric that's hanging out here and I'm going to roll it up so I can see the bottom of my cuff and I can see the top. I don't want anything to get caught in there. What we're going to do is we're going to match these and we're going to create like a little tube. So again, you don't want to have your main fabric caught up in there. You've got your edge and your edge and we're going to pin these. So finish pinning and meet me back here. 
So I've moved back over to my sewing machine. I have my tube with my uh, cuff and then my main fabric is rolled up inside of there and I have my edges pinned. You'll notice I put a little more uh, pins in this time. But this time we want to make our seam allowance a half an inch. So again, if you have some indication down here where your half inch is, that's great. If you have an indicator on your um, selector tools, that's fine too. I'm just going to measure from where my needle was and I'm going to note that I have um, a line here indicating where my half inch is going to be. If that is difficult for you to follow, you might want to take some painter's tape or frog tape and just line it up there. It will act as a guide for you because um, I just don't want you to um, sew along that same line that we did before. This has to be a half inch. So again, I'm going to start a couple of stitches, reverse, and stitch this whole seam. So this is where the fun's going to happen. I have my tube that I showed you before. We pinned it and we sewed it. We have our inside fabric here. Now we get to pull it out. So what I want you to do is find your end and find your main fabric and just start kind of tugging. You're going to eventually kind of turn this inside out. This whole tube is going to go inside out and then we're going to press the cuff. So go ahead and turn your little tube inside out and meet me back here. So that was kind of fun, wasn't it? Now that I've got it turned inside out, I'm going to take and press and what you want to do is you want to make sure that all the seams get pressed towards the cuff. So I'll turn mine this direction and I'll take my hot steam iron and I'll press this going this way. Then I'll turn it back around. I'll give it another little press on that side and then I'll meet you back. So I have it all pressed and what we're going to do now is we're going to sew the seam side seam together. Now I want you to take your um, wrong sides together and this may seem a little odd but what we're going to do is create a French seam. So match up, I've got my right sides out, match up your seams up here at the top where I have my cuff and my flange intersect and I'm going to notice that it's a little thicker now. I'm just going to match these up Go ahead and pin all the way down one side. When you get to the corner, we're going to pivot and we'll pin all the way across the bottom. So you're going to pin the long side and the short side. Meet me back here. So I've got it all pinned together. I've already started the seam, but I wanted to show you something right here because I have all these layers. It's um, going to take me going a little bit slower. One of the things that you can do is you can use a um, another little folded up piece of fabric or my machine has an extra little tool that I can put right behind the back end of my presser foot and what that's going to do is it's going to allow my foot to stay parallel that pulled out of there but um, you just want to keep this foot flat so it doesn't have to climb that mountain and then um, again just really slow across that and then sew down to the corner and I'll meet you there. So now that we're down to just about at the corner I want to slow down and I want to stop about a quarter of an inch from the edge and you're gonna you can either mark it or you can just kind of judge. And then I want you to stop with your needle down, raise your presser foot, and then turn. You're going to have a very square pivot. And then continue along the bottom side. Now that I've finished sewing down the long end and the width of my pillowcase, at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, we're going to trim this now to an eighth of an inch. So you can either use your scissors or you can come back and use your rotary cutter 
and just slice that last little edge, that seam allowance, in half. Um, I'm going to use my rotary cutter. So um, after we finish this, we're going to turn the pillowcase inside out. So go ahead and cut that and then turn your pillowcase inside out. So I went ahead and trimmed my seam allowance to an eighth of an inch and I started to turn the pillowcase inside out but I wanted to mention this little um, point turner that I talked about earlier. What it allows you to do is go into my corners now and I want some nice sharp crisp corners and I can just work that into the corner and um, make sure it's nice and pointy. So you want to do that on both corners. You have a nice sharp corner. And it makes it quick and easy. So after I've done that, we're going to take the seam that we sewed and we're going to we're going to press. So I want you to go ahead and take your hot steam iron and I want you to work the edges and then press along this edge. It'll take a little bit of time and a little bit of work because you want to work, um, work it flat. And as you work it flat, you want to press and then you want to make, take another little section and work it flat and press. So this is going to take me a little bit of time. Go ahead and press down the two seams that you just sewed. So I went ahead and folded and pressed that seam. I don't know if you can see it. Matching those along there and I'm getting ready to sew this for the last time. I just want to notice again um, we've got a really bulky seam here, so you want to go slow. This is going to be a quarter of an inch again. This is our very last seam. And we will be done. So let's finish up. Again, go very, very slowly. So I finished sewing that last seam. I turned my pillowcase inside out. Um, I've also pressed the edge. You can see that your French seam hides those raw edges really nice. Um, it looks very professional and you finished your first project. Congratulations! The nice thing about this is you can pick whatever fabrics match your decor. Um, these are going to look great in my um, RV, so that's where these pillowcases are going. So be sure to join us next time when we start on project number two and we're going to learn how to make a drawstring bag.